Welcome back out to the garden, guys. This weather is so temperamental. It is like 80 degrees out right now, like literally 80 degrees. I'm not exaggerating. And I'm finally gonna get my brassicas planted. If you're new and this is your first time here, I'd invite you to subscribe. My name's Rachel and you're that at that 1870s homestead. We are in Southeast Michigan. And um, this is my first year growing in my raised beds with these little greenhouses. And this year, for the first time, I'm trying to follow the moon phase guide for planting. Um, so far, I've been pretty ob obedient, um, but I am a week behind on my brassicas. So, best laid plans, but we had snow not that long ago. And I'm trying to look at this thing and I'm saying, oh, this is going to be tricky to plant in over there. Because I definitely can't reach across. So I thought I would just share with you my experience using this little raised bed greenhouse tent um, throughout the season, how I like it, things I don't like. Right now, the first thing I don't like about it is there's no opening from the other side. So I'm probably gonna have to untie it over there and then reach under. But I have red cabbage, green cabbage, and Brussels sprouts. My garden plan did have, um, what else did it have? Oh, broccoli in it, but I couldn't find any broccoli starts. I should have looked when I was at the nursery the other day. There's a few volunteer things in here I need to pull out. It looks like a volunteer Swiss chard and a couple sunflowers. This bed was amended at the beginning of the spring um, with just general all-purpose garden amendments. Added some compost, some barn clean out, some bone mill, some azomite. And now we will get to planting. I will tell you, I always, always plant my cabbages too close and my father-in-law fusses at me over it. And I'm like, I know, I know. But um, I will, I think I'm gonna space them. At, these are four inches wide, eight inches deep. I'm gonna run three, three wide. So that's about 18 inches apart or so. So I do have just some all-purpose fertilizer that I will be mixing in each hole as I plant them. <coughs> and that's about it. I just thought I'd take you guys out in the garden with me. I haven't shown a whole bunch of what I've been doing. I've gotten quite a bit planted. Um, and I just needed some me time, quiet, alone in the garden with my thoughts. But let's come in here and let's get to planting. Oh, uh, I guess one thing to note, when we put these in, people, uh, a lot of people commented and it was only because we didn't clearly say what we did. They come with anchor bolts to anchor this frame onto your uh, raised bed and there's one on each side. So they are anchor bolted to the frame in the event of high winds. And we've had, definitely had high winds. Um, and it has not had any ill effect on the greenhouse. Now, uh, Brussels sprouts can get pretty tall. So I think my plan is to run the Brussels sprouts down the center. Oh, and if you're new too, and you haven't been following since last year's preserving video, um, I would say go back and check out my, if you're new to gardening especially, uh, canning greens using your cabbage greens and Brussels sprout and broccoli greens. Um, I did it for the first time last year and absolutely loved it, thrilled with it. Now, brassicas really like their base tightly packed, so give them, don't, let them, don't let them be in too loose the soil. Not clay necessarily, I'm not saying that, but they just like their roots firm because they're gonna get pretty strong and heavy. Okay, maybe I'll do red down one, green down the other, Brussels sprouts in the middle. Let's do that, just because it's gonna be easier. 
Every year I struggle um, in the past with uh, whoo, big fatty earthworm. Um, keeping those cabbage moths off my uh, crops. They uh, haunt me in the garden. They tease me. They're very mean. They're not nice. And <laughs> I have, uh, last year was probably my first real, real concerted effort at keeping them at bay. Um, and I wasn't very successful. I will say even using all the organic sprays and dust. And so this year, what was it, Captain Jack's, I think, is the dust I used last year. This year, I saw Art and Bree's success using their tunnel covers. I said, I think that's the trick. You just have to cover them from day one. Oh, one thing I should note, I'm doing, I already did it, but I'll, I've already seen cabbage moths flying around and I want to check the undersides of the leaves before I close up any babies in here. How's it going, baby? Good. I identified one problem already with this setup. Oh no, what's that? I can't plant over there without untying it and lifting it off because it doesn't unzip on the other side. I can't really reach that far. That's a flaw in the design, I think. Maybe you're just too small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're too small. Yeah, I don't think that sunflower is going to work in here. No, definitely not. I brought out the um, the little clamp things and some screws. Do you want me to screw yeah. that one down? Or do you want to Well, plant? yeah, if you don't mind, let me plant first and then we can do that. All right. We can take these screws out of this and lift it up and then you can plant Yeah, that would be so much easier if you, don't, <laughs> if you don't mind. I mean, I don't think we realize that when we put it in. We can try. Let's see how hard it's going to be. I was telling them how we've lost the battle so many years with those cabbage moths and not this year. So an eight foot row and I fit uh, all six red cabbages in this eight foot row. Nicely spaced apart. Let me show you. Again, just checking the underside of the leaves to make sure that there's no cabbage moth eggs on them. I don't want that. All these front containers, um, I don't know if you guys can see these little flower pots right here. I planted dill in those and dill should help repel, right, cabbage moths from my understanding. So hopefully that works as another good deterrent just to keep them away from my tent. It's not a Swiss chard, look what, well, Swiss chard is kind of like, beets and Swiss chard are kind of the same thing. It's a beet that got left over, it was growing back up out of the soil. And all the amendments I put on the garden this year. I tell you what, I cannot wait till my year seven garden. When I'm not gardening and I just see everything that God just naturally brings back to life. I think it's going to be absolutely epic. Um, pretty soon here I'll be starting, we are actually going to get a lot of rain. So that's one of the main reasons I'm getting out here finishing this planting. We're going to be getting a lot of rain over the next two days, um, probably close to an inch. And I am uh, 
going to be starting my straw bale gardening charging, getting those bales conditioned and ready for planting. Um, they'll host most of my viney summer crops, things like cucumbers and zucchini and squashes. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that process. I'll take you over there in a little bit and show you how I've made them look cute. <laughs> I think it turned out nice. So many volunteer tomatoes, just everything. So I'll definitely try again next year, starting my own brassicas from seed. I started them this year and they were doing pretty okay, I would say. And uh, I had them outside on a nice day and the wind blew them over. So lesson learned there for me. So before I get too much further into my planting, I still have onions and the rest of my cabbage and Brussels sprouts to do. But uh, this is what I chose to do to keep my straw bales contained because over the season they will start to, you know, fall apart or um, degrade or break down so much that they don't hold together very well. So I just ran this green plastic netting around it and tied it up at the corners with a cute bow. <laughs> and my thought process is, is I will be able to plant cucumbers and herbs in the sides and then the big things on the tops. And I think it's gonna turn out great. Here's another one that I did. So um, it's gonna be a really fun experiment still for me to try a new method of gardening and see what I learned this year. And of course I'll share it with you guys. So, what else is planted? Let's go around and do that now. Cause you guys have already seen me plant cabbage. So in this little bed right here, I have all my salad greens down here in the center. I just planted those a couple days ago. So nothing's popping yet. That is actually overwintered kale that I covered in no less than four inches of barn clean out compost and it poked its head through. So I'm going to give it its due to continue to grow and I will eat it in my spring salads. And uh, we're just waiting for all the mixed salad greens to come up right here. Ends of these beds to be determined. My whole entire garden plan has changed. But let's go take a look at the peas and the spinach. So this whole back corner and then the other corner over there, I did rows and rows of spinach. That's what all this green is coming up in here. Just lots and lots of spinach. And then I'm gonna be planting my sunflowers in between the rows. So that as the sunflowers grow, they'll shade out anything that I grow here. Um, and they're actually getting their first sets of true leaves and looking really, really happy. Tons of volunteer sunflowers back here. But that's what I love about Coming out in a spring garden, you never know what you're gonna find and where. Okay, now this is my two rows of peas that I planted. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty well. They're all coming up really nicely. So I've got two rows with like a foot pathway in between. I still need to come out with my, um, I got some short old chicken wire and we picked up some rebar the other day when we were at Lowe's buying all that wood for the fence. And the plan is, um, I've seen one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, Joe from Northern Seclusion or Joe and Zach Survival. Uh, he uses the same pea trellis over and over every single year. He just pulls it out of the garden, rolls it up. And that's what I wanna get to where I can just do it myself. It's not heavy duty, no major tea post. Peas don't need that. They're very light vine. Um, and they don't get super, super tall, at least not the variety that I grow. A four foot trellis is more than enough for them. So that's the plan. I'll probably do that this weekend. It's just priorities. I guess the main thing that I wanna do is get out here, 
before they actually start setting off their first tendrils and they haven't done that yet. All done with that bed. Give them a good soak. I'll wait till Todd. I'll wait till Todd cut gets done mowing the grass to come put these covers back on. I'll trust myself. I'm planting these nine per square foot. I said in my last video, nine inches apart. Not what I meant. Nine per square foot. And uh I'm only planting them like just basically taking my time and burying the roots, um, not planting them deep at all using my same planting method as if I got big starts from Dixondale. And oh wow, I um, had, I guess, for the majority, great comments on that video about my onions rotting. But there were some that misconstrued my comments about not contacting customer service at Dixondale Farms as bashing them. They obviously don't know me and haven't been following my channel for a long time because I have grown nothing but Dixondale onions successfully and rave about Dixondales. Recommend them inside and out. Um, so by no means, that's probably why, honestly, why I didn't contact customer service because I knew it was an anomaly and uh, could have been my fault, not their fault. So uh, I just assume those people don't know me really or new to the channel and haven't been following along on all my onion success stories with Dixondales. So I probably only have just a little over a row of uh, planted of these onions. So I've got quite a bit of work to do here. I'm not gonna bore you with that. I just recently did a video on planting onions. So it's going to be my first time starting from super baby starts like this. And I'm praying it's a glowing success because we love our onions. I just used two onions tonight for dinner. We're having jambalaya and uh, those onions, those copra onions from Dixondale are still perfectly storing from last year's harvest. And here I am planting this year's garden. It's just incredible. I've been doing this YouTube gardening thing with you guys long enough now, I can almost make like an onion growing playlist. But maybe after this year, we'll see what we can put together. Oh, I was just telling them you were making jambalaya. I bought you dinner. <laughs> About onions, because I was like, Todd just used two of our onions from last year to make jambalaya. I used six. Six? Oh, okay. It's got a lot of onion in it. Okay. I brought you dinner if you want to take a break. We yeah. can sit down and Thanks. eat. Did you see that one blew away? <laughs> sure. Are you ready to show them your pine trees yet? Did you tell them about them? 